we were just there. And we're like, oh, look, they got a funder. And we're looking yeah, around like, us. dude, <laughs> that's, that's us. us. That, hey, that, that's us. But, uh, but. <laughs> like, subscribe, follow. There's more to come from Judd Up Terrier, and we're going to keep hot on this conversation with them. So there's that. Now, I also want to address something that David Cummings had brought up. He said, what do we think about Lillian? Um, so now, between this yes. general conversation of what Lillian and, and others have brought up, because General Render out there had a couple of comments as well. Look, Lillian is going after a different market. And Corey... I think you were the first one that even showed me Lilium, right? I, th I don't. I don't think I even Lilium, paid attention yeah. to them, but yeah. I think that they're going about their their developmental process about building up these uh, transportation hubs and their equipment at the same time, yep. and I think that they're marketing themselves slightly differently, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Seems to be, yeah. I mean, uh, they they not too long ago, but they released a concept of for their, for their seven seater version. So they've got a smaller one, which we first right. showcased on here and talked about. <clears throat> and then they just, uh, well, relatively recently talked about their their seven seater mm -hmm. uh, model, which is uh, just a bigger version. Um, Lilium, I don't know if you want to bring them up on the show, but or up on the on the page there. But um, they really are using a whole bunch of smaller electric ducted fans. And um, as we were kind of talking about this earlier, we were talking, we were just kind of brainstorming to remember that you know, okay, so it needs to make so much lift to get itself off the ground, and then it's, you know we could say it needs to divide all that about that force amongst all these these uh, lifting components whatever whatever it might be right if you got two rotors in a chinook well it's got to lift all that mm -hmm. weight just over two rotors if you got a whole bunch of ducted fans it's got to split all that <clears throat> all that lift amongst all those ducted fans um while it well it certainly would seem maybe they have maybe a bit better um uh stability because yeah. there's so many little points in space they can you know so many different points along that arm that they could mm -hmm. have thrust being generated. Um, I wonder how efficient it's going to be over time, over distance, because they're also saying it's not going to be too slow. I mean, if you talk about Lilium compared to something like an E-Hang uh, that we that we talked about recently yeah. as well, um, they're, yeah, they're totally, not totally different, obviously, but they're, they're, um, they're different vehicles. The Lilium's going to go a bit faster, a bit further. E-Hang, it's really not designed for that, and you can, and it's, and they, they talk about that. So, um, I, I did find Lilium's, you know, before I found Jet Up Terrors, and I I do like, I feel like I like the aesthetic yeah, it's, it's of nice the Lilium. Um, and as you said, they're they got some other things going on with where they're going to have their vertiports, and there's some of that talk mm -hmm. going on actually in Florida. So there's some some interesting uh, things going on, and and with the vertiport news, there's I think they've got announced mm -hmm. three. It could, I could totally be wrong about that. I think I know there's one in Orlando. I think there's going to be one in Tampa, and I think right. there's going to be one in uh, uh, down south, though, so down south Miami. somewhere. Miami. Was it Miami? I can't remember exactly where. But but the but the interesting part about Lilium or yeah, Lilium is they mm -hmm. talk about the range, and they'll be able to go in intercity. And so you know, from one city to another, they have that kind of range, that kind of speed. But there's so, but there's a limitation that um, I see with Lilium as well, though, and that is the fact that their cruise altitude that they're mentioning right now is ten thousand feet. OK, uh, and mm -hmm. their max range is, is they're saying is about 150, uh, 55 miles right now. Look, there's there's a couple of things that have to be said as caveats with Lilium. That is that range is a problem when it comes to weather systems. And that altitude is a problem when it comes to flying into known weather conditions that produce icing. And <clears throat> if you're going into IMC conditions, those are going to be challenges that this entire marketplace is going to have to go up against. OK, yeah. yeah. All the One of the things yeah. when you say high speed and you think about high speed and if you can break that 200, you know, not barrier, mm -hmm. that means that if you can do it on traditional. Say gas engines like Jet of Terra could and so on and so forth, you eliminate some of the range anxiety and you eliminate some of the altitude constraints that these things can fly in. And then you also eliminate some of the possibilities of being trapped in bad weather and being able to outfly weather when your speed increases like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So. And I'm concerned if now that I look at Lilium's design is how well can these little micro engine slots thwart icing? Okay. That because each one of those ducted areas is basically almost going to be like a carburetor and that, that pressure differential, and it's going to induce probably some sort of moisture probably could render them susceptible to, to basically icing over. Um, that could right. be a challenge that they're going to face, which we don't know. And and look, this is not just Lillian, by the way. Javi, you know, yeah, Archer, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Beta, all of them are going to... I mean, Jet Up Terror, everybody has 
you right. know, airframe icing. And, and I mean, that's that's something that we were considering, just so you guys know, too. Also considering maybe reaching out to the, the regulators to see what we can find out about how they're going to be certified. Uh, it, are they going to be even IFR right. certified? I don't know. I don't know, because there's, there's some other things we could go into with a little bit of pilot experience in terms of uh, reserve time to get to a separate airport. If you can't get to your first, you got to have some enough uh, in this in this way, enough range or electricity as it would be to get somewhere else mm -hmm. and do a successful landing uh, with EVs that have a limb of a range of 150 miles. And they're going to go. Let's say they go from Tampa to Miami. Well, if you go from Tampa to and can't can't land in Miami, and You're that's the only other forty port. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, where are they going to land at, uh, you know, somewhere, some other airport nearby that's yeah. not a vertiport? port? You know, it's just there's there's things to be worked out. But it actually um, and those are things we're going to keep track of. But yeah, we, there, there's too many, there's yet, two so. questions in there from general. He goes, what do you see the mission of the e vehicles and inner city travel? And are there replacement for helicopter personal travel? And he doesn't see them being economical enough to compete with bu cars, buses and traditional aircraft. So here, let me let me throw mm -hmm. something at you. First of all, helicopters are notoriously yep. expensive, way too expensive. And the reason why EV toll travel has not made it into the there mainstream marketplace is because there's a three to one. So you spend three times as much on maintenance on a helicopter as you do for every hour flown as compared to a traditional fixed wing aircraft. That's a number one. So that's the reason why the economies of scales have never really matched up where people can see this becoming a replacement for anything else because it's been too damn expensive, right? Secondarily, the noise, which is another big issue, right? Anytime helicopter routes have yeah. been established in major cities, there's been an uproar of the locals basically saying noise abatement procedures need to be put in place because it's generally reserved for the ultra rich or very, very wealthy people. So this has kind of been a knock always against the vertical takeoff and landing crowd, right? If you get the prices mm -hmm. down to the right price point, and this means making it effectively a one-for-one -one against cars, buses, and traditional aircraft, you come out with three major advantages. Number one, you can get to pick point A to point B. You don't have to follow a road system if not necessary, if it's not designated by the FAA. So you can pick your place of entry and landing, right? Uh, number two, speed. You immediately gain an, an additional amount of speed. So if it's mission critical to get someone from point A to point B, and this has been something that's been thwarting major downtowns and intracity travel, that all of a sudden becomes a massive one, right? And really the last one is, okay, in, in, in the functionality aspect of it is as these technologies start to groom themselves to become better and better and better, they're going to become cost effective in ways that you might not see because you don't have to maintain roads. Right. You don't have to maintain traffic lights. You don't have to maintain intersections. Right. Runways. You don't have to maintain yeah. runways. You just have to maintain spots and the and the rail, you know, and basically the area that this thing's going to fly in. So your infrastructure, mm -hmm. bridges, uh, other places, road lighting. OK. Uh, police enforcement on the ground for traffic violations. You're talking about a whole nother system that doesn't have to be supported when these things come up, because. Yes, that infrastructure is going to have to be built, but it's going to have to be built in non-material ways. So, yeah, yes, yeah. a lot of the the big things against helicopters, yeah. as you said, are cost, noise, and sure. maintenance. Right. So the big things you said, and and all those, yeah. That, that if you get a, and the idea behind a lot of these EVs is that they're going to be much quieter. That's a huge mm -hmm. thing we've talked about a bunch of times, and a lot of the manufacturers, everybody's talking about how how they're going to be a little quieter. So just imagine if you could have a, like a say right. a seven seater, that would be, let's say. I mean, we'll say it's as cost effective to the passengers mm -hmm. if it's fully loaded with passengers as maybe taking your own car across from like 100, right. 100 mile trip or road trip. It's going to be, let's say, as quiet as possible um, over the people mm -hmm. that it's going to fly over. Um, some of these companies like Jobby are saying, you know, at altitudes of like 400 feet or so, it's going to be like 60, 60 loud, decibels. That's, right. I have my own personal perceptions on that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just I'm just saying. Yeah. So, you know, much quieter than a helicopter. And then they're going to be a lot cleaner and easier to maintain. Right. That's the idea. So um, getting to your main question there, though, that's kind of the mission. The mission, at least for a lot of these public companies, is going to be air transport for people or eventually air mm -hmm. taxi services. And then some cargo stuff. There's companies definitely talking about aer aeromedical, um, and that that there'll probably be a sector for that if if this if the whole the whole sector really takes off as it would be. Uh, but it's mostly like right now air taxi mm -hmm. stuff for just people. 
Uh, and then, yeah, is it a replacement of a helicopter? Uh, absolutely, That's the idea. 100%. Yeah. 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 Personal travel, not... I haven't seen much about your own personal... Everybody is like, ooh, you know, which one would you like to have if you could fly it anywhere you want in your own thing? But that that's not what a lot of the companies are no, marketing that's true. themselves to. So, um, and the whole conversation so yeah. get look, speed, altitude, and destination. Look, that's why you have jets compared to helicopters, but you also mm -hmm. have ununified communities across this country where that have general aviation airports that no one can really get in and get out of all the time because they don't have a pilot's license, but they don't really know from the air how really easy it would be to build that, you know, that, that structure to get those smaller aircraft in and out. There's going to be challenges, and we know that. We know the challenges, uh, but we just want to be realistic about what the expectations are for the marketplace. But it can be done at the right yeah. price, yeah. and it's the price point that's most important. But he's right. He is right. They, right now, they economically cannot compete with buses. They can't compete with other forms of transport. Currently, no. No, currently, no. 100%. Currently, that's not but the that's... thing. Yeah, yeah. They're just doing developments in, in the noise. They're developments yeah. in the, the batteries. And, of course, there's things like regulation that still have a big a big component. And then I don't want to downplay all of the, the, the public acceptance sure. of these things, right? Whether where they're going to be mm -hmm. taken off and landing from. And then just will you get on it, right? So, so general... If it was cost effective as any other method and then not loud and it was easy to get there, you know, maybe security wasn't a big thing like taking a plane flight, you know, would you be would you even consider it? Because I know some people just on principle, they either don't mm -hmm. like flying at all or they just look at these and say, no, man, I'd rather drive because that doesn't look safe. I, you know, and there's just the, the public acceptance is so going to be four hours, too. right? I'm going to, I'm going to so. put that limit at four hours. The, the cutoff point where most, most people make a destination trip and because they can make it easier economical is about four hours, right? Which would average about 240 miles of driving at 60 miles an hour, right? 240 miles, because look, you know, that's not a four hour trip. You know, that's more like a five and a half hour trip. Cause you're going to have to stop. You're going to get caught in traffic. You know, this is so many other things in that range that are going to make a difference, right? But if I knew that I could shoot across and make that trip in one hour in one of these aircraft, mm -hmm. and I knew I wouldn't have to worry about traffic, I'd get in and get out, and I could probably make a two-day stay over worth twice my time because I don't eat up half my Friday or half my Monday, right? Just getting in and out of there. That changes the concept of what yep. people will be willing to pay for to do these things because it's end... Yeah, no right. wear and tear on your vehicle, yeah. it's no end gas. To end, and, and that's yeah. a plug-in, plug-out, end-to-end destination because now you don't have to go... From Chicago to Denver, you know, or some that's I know that's longer, but you don't have to go to Chicago to like, you know, <laughs> someplace else to make that trip, you know, and then have to take a smaller plane out because that's the current route that you get. And you turn it into like still a six hour traveling day. Right. So that's that's part of it, yep. guys. Yep. And this marketplace is going to grow. But two point two billion dollar valuations proves that people are hot on it. But now they got to make it worth their while. Right. So that's the other part of the segment that we're concerned about. So uh, we love the discussion. Thanks for the comments, everybody. K keep them coming. And look, if you oh, agree yeah. or disagree, because I'll break this one out as a separate conversation about what the EV toll market's got to do. But if you agree or disagree, let us know in the comments below, because we'd love to hear uh, more about it. So, uh, But certainly potential benefits, but they're relying on trained pilots. Ooh. We can't, oh, even, we a, can't yeah. even touch that because we we have been... we Oh, you could take this one because it's math okay okay yeah so so exactly what you're talking about general we, we've we've touched on this before as well so many 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 of the companies doing air taxi services are touting the idea that eventually mm -hmm. they're going to be fully autonomous there's different ways they're saying they're going to go about right. it different time frames some of them are even saying in the beginning which is probably probably the case when the first air vehicles are actually certified to actually mm -hmm. fly with people on board they're probably going to have a pilot or, or with some kind of controls on board that's mm -hmm. li literally the pilot for some amount of time until probably the FA figures out they're happy enough with with that. And then uh, even when that pilot is said to exit the aircraft, there's almost all of them are saying there's going to be a way for a certified individual mm -hmm. pilot on the ground to be able to remotely take control of the vehicle if needed. Obviously, that that opens a whole other oh, thing God. like security because now you've got a vehicle controlled from some of the place. I know, I know. I we 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 have that <laughs> thought as well. Um, so so going along with that too, the the train pilot part. We we well, touched CAE on that as well. Okay, just threw if, themselves if out there. Yeah. If you didn't know, both of us are uh, helicopter and mm -hmm. airplane pilots certified, and so we've both kind of commented to say, okay, 
Um, the closest uh, analog analogy I can think of is maybe pilots that are certified to fly like um, tilt rotor aircraft, um, which fly like a plane. Like right. It's like the Osprey. So it has those those tilt tilt in the cells. So it can take off vertically and then it they, they tilt forward and then it can fly like a plane. Can I, can I chime in here um, for a second? And so there's, there's a couple of things. So look, yeah, yeah, the other ahead, problem yeah. is the category and class of what airmen are considered able to fly. Right now, I don't know of any UAS or, or supplemental type certificate that is available to airmen that allows you to carry passengers on a remote vehicle. So that class of airmen or aircraft doesn't even exist, right? Well, Number yeah, one. Yeah. Number two, CIE, yeah. major, major influence in the uh, simulator market and the training market. They announced just two weeks ago that they're starting to develop their programs to bring online. I basically, I think it was by 2025 to bring these types of pilots into the supply chain. We know what it's like to bring pilots into the supply chain because for six years, we both worked at training uh, helicopter pilots for a major helicopter company in, in the country. And we know what it's like. So certainly there's going to be challenges, but man, that conversation is going to blossom as people start to see what's really necessary because you're still going to look at do you think that there's a pilot shortage now in the airlines because that's semi self manufactured? There's a lot of convolution in that conversation. Wait till you need. Wait till you think you need twenty thousand pilots to remote pilot all these other vehicles because the schedules, then times, and everything else that's going to be necessary to make this happen. And then you have to find out where to select them from, and then you got to find a place to put them all. Okay, if they're not going to be on board the yeah. aircraft because. Then we had other random oh, things God. like currency, get current? which is, you know, because pilots have to fly so often to maintain their level of proficiency so they can actually be act as pilots. So that was the other thing, too. If you got all these remote pilots that, with, that are responsible for these the operations, but they're not actually flying at all, does that count? Like, or does, I don't know. How do you, how do you how remotely does that work? AI so, challenge a guy to hit another button for being an observer and then say, well, you haven't observed enough? Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't know. You go out and observe more. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. So... So general, it's a big, big it's huge. a big conversation. Uh, another another one we're gonna follow closely because it's it's gonna develop. Um, yeah, yeah. It, there's nope. there's no answer for that. What, where the pilots? There you go. All right, now. we got to move on because there's actually 